Hello students, welcome to your Bondi class once again. So I hope you have gone through what we have discussed in the last class. Uh, we have discussed what are the characteristics, features of living organisms and what, is, what do we mean by nomenclature, what do you mean by identification, what is uh, taxonomy and what is classification. So these are certain things we have discussed in the last class. And in continuation with that, uh, let's see uh, in details what are the taxonomic categories. Uh, what are the different categories that are uh, used during the classification of a plant or an animal or even a microbe? Okay, so uh, classification, uh, as we have discussed in the last class, is um, it's like arranging books in a library. Basing on the resemblances and similarities and differences, uh, animals or plants which have, uh, which have similar characters, they are placed in one group and uh, like that they are classified into groups. So uh, classification is not a single step. It's not a single step. It consists of a series of steps or it consists of a hierarchy of steps. So this, uh, since this hierarchy are part of the overall taxonomic classification, they are also known as uh, taxonomic categories. So uh, as I've said, uh, this uh, putting up of this taxonomic categories in logical sequence Logical sequence is known as hierarchy and there are seven obligate taxonomic categories. There are seven obligate taxonomic categories. These are the kingdom, phy uh, kingdom phylum or division, class, order, then the family, the genus and the species. So uh, during the classification of a plant or during the classification of an animal, these are the seven obligate categories that are used. Uh, of course, uh, many taxonomists uh, or botanists, they will, or even a zoologist, they have placed, they have uh, given subclass or suborder, subfamily, uh, not subfamily, subclass, suborder in between them, and species, maybe even some varieties like that. But these are the seven obligate important uh, taxonomic categories, and the putting up of these taxonomic categories in logical sequence is known as hierarchy. Okay, so as we move from species to uh, uh, upwards, they, these taxonomic categories are arranged in ascending order. The species, genus, family, order, class, phylum, or division, and kingdom. These taxonomic categories are arranged in ascending order, and the species, uh, which is the lowest uh, category or uh, which is the lowest rank, uh, form the basis of classification. So all these uh, categories, they are also known as uh, taxa or taxon, and this species, which from the base, it, uh, it forms the basis of taxonomic classification and species are a group of organisms which can interbreed among themselves. Species are a group of uh, organisms or a group of individuals which can interbreed among themselves. So uh, example is that uh, example of uh, species like Solantubersum, which is the botanical name of potato, then uh, Solanum melongena, which is the botanical name of brinjal, then Panthera leo, which is the uh, zoological name or scientific name of uh, lion. Panthera tigris, the scientific name of tiger. So these are certain examples of species. And you, as we have discussed in the previous class, we know that a scientific name consists of two components, generic name and the uh, specific epithet. The generic name first is the first component, while the second component is the specific epithet. So, when you look into this scientific names, we can see that this tuberosum, then Melungena, Leo, and Tigris, they form the specific epithet or they are the species. So this, uh, a tiger a can breed naturally within, with a tigris only, not with a uh, lion or a leopard. Maybe that can be done uh, under artificial condition, but what we mean here is uh, under natural condition. So also a potato plant will, uh, breed with only a uh, the uh, potato plant would breed only with a potato plant not with any other plant maybe in case of plant breeding or some other artificial means or uh, tissue culture they can maybe they can breed with uh, any other uh, maybe other some species but a particular species will breed only with its own members so species consist of uh, individuals which can interbreed among themselves and these members which constitute a species they have uh, uh, maximum amount of characters that are similar to one another. In fact, almost all the characters are similar to one another. So a potato plant will look like a potato plant only, not a brinjal plant. So also a uh, lion will look like, uh, the members of lion will look like one another, so also a tiger. So species consists of uh, groups of individuals 
which interpret among themselves and which have maximum character. And next higher up is the, the category, the genus. So this genus consists of species, closely related species. Genus consists of uh, closely related species and this uh, species which constitute the genus, they have many similar characters. They have many similar characters. For example, uh, Solanum consists of the genus Solanum consists of potato as well as brinjal. So both this uh, uh, potato and brinjal, they belong, they have the generic name Solanum. Solanum tuberosum in case of potato and Solanum menongena in case of uh, brinjal. So also, uh, uh, lion and tiger, they have the same generic name, uh, that is Panthera. So, uh, this uh, brinjal and um, potato, they have many similar characters. As such, they are being placed under the same generic name. So, also uh, tig uh, a tiger and a leo uh, lion, and also uh, you can even take, for example, leopard, they have many similar characters. So, also they have, they have been placed under the same generic name, Panthera. So, genus consists of species which closely related species or species which resembles one another. Next, higher up the higher text, uh, higher category is the family. So this family consists of genus or uh, genus which are closely related or consists of genera which are closely related. So this uh, solanum and detura detura or even impatiens, the ornamental flower impatiens, the potato or uh, this uh, detura, this uh, poisonous plant, they have many similar characters, but they belong to different genera. They belong to different genera, but they have many similar characters. As such, they have been placed under the same family Solanaceae. Then, coming with uh, the animal group, this uh, panthera, the genera panthera, the tiger, lion, the leopard, they have many similar characters with the cats, the house cat. So uh, the house cat Felix. So else. That's why they have been placed under the family Felidae and we also call them as the cat family. So this family consists of genera which are closely related and which have many uh, characters. But as you move on, as we move up higher the taxonomic uh, categories, you find that the similar characters existing in between the members, they goes on decreasing and the differences starts uh, getting wider. Okay, next higher up is the order. The uh, high order consists of, or it's an assemblage of uh, closely related families. Order consists of closely, assembly, it's an assemblage of closely related families. And the family like Solanaceae, Convolvulaceae, uh, example of Convolvulaceae is the uh, Topiaca. So this uh, potato, Topiaca and all, they have been placed under the same uh, different families. They have been placed under different families, but since they have some uh, common characters, as such, they have been placed under the order Polymonia list. Next, um, in case of this, uh, the family Felidae and uh, Kennedy, the cats and dogs, uh, Kennedy, uh, they have common characters. They have some common characters. As such, they have been placed under the order Carnivora. They have been they have a common character of being carnivorous, so they have been placed under the order carnivora. So this order consists of uh, closely related families or it's an assemblage of uh, related families. Next, higher up the taxonomic uh, classification is the class. So this closely related or uh, closely related orders, they are placed under the same class, closely related orders, they are placed under the same class and the order uh, Polymonialis and uh, the order Sapindales, example of Sapindales is uh, Mango. So since they have similar characters, they are placed under the class Dicotyledony. And since they have two cotyledons, there are two types of classes in case of plants, Dicot or Dicotyledony and Monocots or Monocotyledony. So since this potato and mangoes, they have two cotyledons, they have been placed under the same class, dicots. And this, uh, the order carnivora and primate, primate includes all those monkeys, orangutan, etc. They have been placed under the same class, mammalia, because of the presence of uh, uh, external air and body hairs. So uh, class is an assemblage of related families, although 
the differences get wider and the similar characters which exist in between the members of a particular taxonomic category get lesser and lesser as we go up higher the classification. Okay, so now the next higher category is the phylum or the division. So all uh, these angio uh, angiospermy, they are also known as flowering plants. All the flowering plants have been placed under the division angiospermy. So the term division is used in case of plants while the term phylum is used in case of the classification of the animals. So this angiospermy, they are flowering plants, so it includes both dicot, the dicot flowers, uh, flowers, so also the monocot flowers, uh, flowers. So they have been placed under the division angiospermy. And in case of animals, these uh, mammals, uh, they have been placed, or even the uh, reptiles, apes, fishes and all, they have been placed under chordata because of the presence of a uh, notochord. So, uh, and just, uh, the phylum chordata or the division angiospermy is an assemblage of related classes. And the highest taxonomic category is the kingdom. And all the plants have been placed under the kingdom uh, plantia and all the animals have been placed under the kingdom animalia. So this is how um, classification of a plant or classification of an animal is done uh, using these seven obligate categories. And uh, we go, it's, it's arranged in ascending order as we move from species to kingdom, kingdom being the highest uh, taxonomic category while species being the base forming the base. And uh, as we move up higher, as we go up higher and higher, the characters which are present in bet uh, between the members gets lesser and lesser. Uh, while it is maximum in the species, while the similarities or the resemblances between the members of a particular taxonomic category, it goes on decreasing. So these are the seven categories, seven obligate categories which are followed. So um, with this, we can move on to the next topic uh, that is taxonomical aids. Uh, they are our uh, help, taxonomical help. Uh, the, the knowledge about this. Uh, taxonomical studies is, uh, as we have, uh, as I've seen in, in the previous class, that it's important not only uh, uh, in few fields, but it's important even in industry, agriculture, the health, environment, uh, etc. So, uh, to have a basic knowledge about the different types of uh, plants, different types of animals, and their correct identification and the placing them in the correct taxonomic category is very important. To identify them, why, do they, why are they placed in the category species or why have they been placed in the, uh, under this genus or why are they placed under this family? The knowledge about this is very important and this can be obtained only when you have a direct, uh, when you have a correct identification. When you have a correct identification, when you have a thorough or keen uh, identification, then only then you will be able to place them correctly and placing them correctly is very important. So uh, identification involves uh, intensive uh, laboratory and field studies to identify a particular organism, give the characters, identify it with characters and then give the name and place them in this uh, uh, taxonomic category requires intensive uh, field work, intensive laboratory work. So. Um, Biolog uh, biologists and uh, taxonomists, they have developed certain techniques, they have developed certain uh, sources by means of which the identification can be made easy or they, are, uh, they have identified certain sources from where uh, the studies can be made easy. And some of the sources are the herbaria or herbarium. So uh, what is a herbarium? A herbarium or herbar uh, herbarium is a storehouse of plants. It's a storehouse of plants where the plants are preserved, where the plants are preserved, where the plants are dried, they are preserved, and they are pressed in a sheet. So a herbarium, herbarium is a storehouse of plant materials where plant materials are dried, pressed, and preserved on herbarium sheets. So what we usually, or what a taxonomist usually do is that uh, the plant material is first collected from the field, information gathered, they are uh, dried, they are dried pressed, and they are pasted on the sheet known as the herbarium sheet. So along with this, uh, during the time of collection of this plant material, certain informations are collected along with this plant. So this information are placed at the, uh, at the corner and it consists of uh, the information in this corner consists of 
collector's name, the botanical name, scientific name, then a family, common name, and users, etc. So this information which have been given here at the bottom can be used as a source of reference. So whenever a person is about to identify a plan or a plan of any importance, they can easily refer this herbarium. And these herbarium sheets are arranged in according to a uh, accepted system of classification. So accordingly, they can identify it and they can uh, classify it. The next aid or uh, source is the botanical garden. So these botanical gardens are large size tracks where uh, they Authorities grow varieties of uh, plants and each of these plants they carry the names, the botanical name, the common name and they can give information about what type of plant that is. It carries information about the scientific name, it carries information about the uh, family. So uh, visiting a botanical garden can give not only uh, for leisure but also give us uh, they are of uh, educational importance where we can identify and we can learn about the different types of plants. Then the next is a zoological park. A zoological park or a zoo, uh, uh, it's as a, a place where animals are kept, a place where wild animals are kept, taking care that the wild envir uh, the environment or the condition there is similar to the wild environment. So care is taken that the animals in the zoo, they are provided with conditions which are similar to their wild environment and the carries and, and observing them can give us information about the behavior, about the food habits, etc. So this can also serve as a source of educa education and they can also be visited for leisure purpose. Then the next aid or source is the museum. Many, uh, many schools and uh, educational institutions, colleges, they have a museum and in museum, you can have, uh, we observe that there is artistic uh, display of materials uh, where you can observe, you can study uh, and you can learn more. So uh, this in museum, uh, animals specimens or plant specimens or any type of specimens, they are collected and preserved in jars, in preservative alcohols. And, so, and also they can be preserved as dry specimens and uh, particularly insects, they are preserved in boxes and uh, besides that, uh, larger animals, they are uh, stuffed with uh, materials inside and they are displayed for observation, observation and study. So visiting a museum with uh, artistic display of materials or specimens can give you idea, give you information while you are trying to classify a plant or an animal. And the last one is, uh, there's also an, another aid known as key. So this key consists of uh, Contrasting characters, contrasting characters, and during the classification or during the identification of a plant or animal, this key, uh, which consists of contrasting characters, can lead on to one another. And this will lead to the acceptance of one character and the rejection of one another, one uh, the other character. So acceptance of a positive character will lead into another character, which can be again yes, no. So again, this will go on. Finally, it leads to the correct identification of the plant. So this is how, um, uh, these are some of the sources, botanical garden, herbaria, zoological park, museum, key. These are some of the aids that helps in the identification and subsequently placing them in the correct taxonomic category, which is very important without which uh, the identification or the classification will go half a set. So uh, with this, I went up this chapter, chapter one.